Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ken Busby, your cultural czar, a member of the board of Tulsa Symphony, and we are here with Jill Wiebe and Jeff Cowan, principal harp and principal viola of your Tulsa Symphony for our fantastic musician moment. Hello, beautiful people. Hey. Hi. Hey, beautiful person. Thanks, man. How you yeah. doing today? Good to see you. Uh, I've yes. been looking forward to talking to you. and. Me too. Oh, thank you. I've been looking forward to this too. I'm glad, I'm glad schedules finally worked and let us do it. So I, I've wondered, have you thought about what the new normal might look like when this is over? It's like, how do we keep this family time? How do we sort of restructure so that we, we this because there are some very good positives out of all of this. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's definitely something that when you're in the middle of the season, really busy and it's hard to find that time nights and weekends when you know, we're working during the day as well, so um, we're just enjoying it for now. That's what, yeah. It's different. It's different. But the new, when you get back, if we got back into the old norm, there's definitely, the quality time is, is there. It may, may not be as much, but, you know, it's still important, and we find sure. wonderful things to do together as a family. But, and that's just kind of the life of a musician. You know, it's just the way it is, especially with kids. We know we've got colleagues in the symphony that have children, and you just have to, you just have to deal with it. Right. And everybody learns. I mean, that's Willa is our new, with newest <laughs> child, and yes. she's got rhythm. She's got she's a little got Ethel rhythm in her. I, so, I like yeah, it. That's part of life. She's been around music since the very beginning, so there's some benefits to that. Absolutely. There's benefits to the husband. Uh, there you go. Absolutely. Uh, also, so uh, spending this much quality time with the children too. Are you also rethinking about whether you want them to be musicians when they grow up? <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that today because um, our our older daughter for a long time has said that she wants to play the harp, and just today huh. I was talking to her about that, and she said, "Nope, she doesn't want to play because she doesn't want to have to go to the rehearsals at night." Oh. oh, she said that today. Okay, yeah, yeah. but I, I hope that that one of them plays something. That that could all change tomorrow too. Yes, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah for the longest time, it was I can't play harp because I'm going to be uh, a highway police, highway patrol. Higher patrol officer. Oh, so. that's important. Yeah, that yeah, because I'm going to be an artist. Right. And I said you can always play harp on the side. I mean, it's not like <laughs> you. So anyway. Yeah, we're kind of, it's curious uh, to see how it evolves with the children. And, sure. Uh, sure. Harp, she, Clara, our five-year-old, says she wants to play harp. And what's exciting is that Jill does have uh, her very first harp that her father built. Oh, boy. And it's a smaller harp, which is perfect for sure. a child. So it'll be curious to, you know, at some point we'll get that up here and we'll nice. give it a whirl. Jill will give it a whirl. Right. And, and well, and, and, and thinking about the Appassionato duo, your great uh, dynamic duo performance, uh, it could become a trio. It could become, you know. Yeah, maybe we possible. could go to Branson, start to, <laughs> start some sort of a family, you know. The Weedy Cowan's Bunkers trio. It, it could. Just throw it out there. Just throw it out there. Let me ask you something. Actually, I, I know the answer to the question, but I'm not, I, and I, I don't know if our audience does. So, how long have you each been with the Tulsa Symphony? Um, I have been with the symphony for maybe 12 or 13 years. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly. I always try and think back when I came to Tulsa, and I can never remember the year without thinking really hard, so... But I, I came in um, by the second season. I so. thought that's what I was thinking. Okay, that's what I was sort of yeah, remembering also. Yeah, okay. Well, because we're getting ready to start our 15th season. Of course, Jeff, you've been with us since the beginning. Yes. Um, yeah, um, with the transition. From the Philharmonic uh, to the symphony and exactly, everything. Yeah. Exactly. I remember. <laughs> yeah, you remember. I remember those days at Harwelden. I remember well, those I, days. I was going to school at the time, too, as a speech-language pathologist, so I remember right. the challenges of those early early times. Sure. Getting back into the swing of really managing, studying, and practicing. So. 
Sure. Wow, 15 seasons. It's, they're ready for that. Yeah, we're ready for the 15th. Yeah. So I, I, it is. It's it's been incredible. Um, so I was thinking about this because uh, I knew I knew you were doing. I, I mean, I know you're also a speech pathologist. But have have you either one ever thought about what what you would be doing if you weren't musicians? Like, was there ever anything like out of the? I, you know, I always really thought I might do this. Right, really like to do that. Well, with, I'll, I'll go first. When I was a kid here in Oklahoma, I wanted to be an oceanographer. Naturally. Well, we have more coastline than any <laughs> other state. So a there you go. A little bit different water. And different, yeah, a little yeah, bit. A little bit. Life. Uh-huh. Water life, but um, aqua life. But um, when, I was, when I was looking at a learning something new, mm-hmm. I took this, it's called the Strong Interest Survey. And what it's, it's hundreds and hundreds of questions, and they match you with people of similar interest okay. that are happy with their careers. And number one was forest ranger. But I, you know, there here I was in Tulsa. Right. Was, got a fa- I had a family, and I didn't want to leave, so I had to kind of scratch that off. But I do love the outdoors. I think uh, botany. I don't know plant life. Maybe the homestead. Maybe I would have a homestead. You know, somewhere <laughs> with uh, you know thousand chickens and some ducks and horse. I don't know. I, I'm Geese definitely and, in, yeah. in the earth, I think, is where I would be, just working the okay. land or something. I don't know. Okay. That's that's good. I'm just curious. How about you, Jill? Yeah. Moving well, by well, the log. Jill, <laughs> <laughs> give me something I can work with here. <laughs> um, when I was like in high school, middle school, I loved to travel. Um, museums. So I guess I probably would have gone into like, museum studies or something in that area. I love museums. I think I think that would be interesting work. Yeah. Well, I, I worked at Gilcrease for eight years, so I mean, I, I have that you know interest in it. So I think yeah, those are both cool. Um, so final thought: um, how how did you come to your instruments? We're getting photo bombed here too. Hi, hi. Can say hello. Hello. So, how did you come to your instrument? Oh, to the harp? Uh-huh. Well, um, my mother always wanted to play the harp. So, when I was growing up, I just heard talk about it all the time. And so, I think it just rubbed off on me that that would be a really neat thing to do. Um, and then, of course, as Jeff mentioned, my father made my first harp. Right. Um, his family is like master woodworkers, and they also build airplanes. So he just bought a blueprint and made the harp completely from that. I think there was even like some airplane machinery they had to use to curve the wood. And it was very complicated. Um, had, it's just an amazing instrument. And that's what got me started. Had you, had you expressed interest in it when he decided to do that and build one? Oh, yeah. It, it, my mother and I have uh-huh. been asking just, for years. Okay. <laughs> I never thought he would actually say yes, and finally, oh, when I was ten years old, he just decided that it was time, and he did it. That's cool. And he, he would he would never uh, make another harp because it was so much work. <laughs> I bet every time I as I see yours and I look at them, they are just so intricate and so yeah, I can imagine that that would be very challenging. Wow, How it's about- it's really amazing. The uh, so when Jill went to Eastman. And before she left, purchased her first professional harp. Mm-hmm. At one point, he made this very lightweight stand that matched the engravings and carvings of that Lion and Healy harp. And it's, it's just pretty remarkable. Wow. Wow. So he's very talented. Oh, obviously. Obviously, yeah. That's cool. How um, about you and the viola? Well, you know, I grew up in Tulsa. Right. Uh, went to Perry Elementary, and you know when fifth grade came around, there was an opportunity to start an instrument. And I don't know if you went through this, but in music class, uh-huh. they played this LP, and played a pitch, and then they played a second pitch, and you had to write whether it was the same or that it was higher or lower. Okay, yeah, this is re- I'm remembering some of this, yeah. Unfortunately, at that time, they only people take an instrument that did a good job at that test. But nonetheless, I passed it, and so, you know, so there was a group of us that started strings. And, right. uh, Richard Richard was my teacher back then. I don't know if you ever knew that name. No. Uh-uh. They were 
a lot of the teachers back then were kind of these old jazzers. He played clarinet and sax, and he, he wore a suit every day. Fun. Anyway, he was asking what instrument we wanted to play. Well, I wanted to play the cello. Uh-huh. But I thought it was called the viola. So I said I wanted to play the viola. And then the next day, he was measuring us for instruments. And he put his violin under my chin, and I just about fainted. I froze. I didn't say a word. Uh -huh. And I, that's how I learned. I started on viola, and I've always played the viola. And I was the only violist in the orchestra. So that's how, wow. I, that's how it went, man. Wow. Amazing. And, and think. Look, look where it's brought you. Look what you've done. Is that cool? I know. It's exciting. It's such a beautiful instrument. Uh, it is. So, uh, and and it, we've, we've been so fortunate uh, with the duo. Oh, yeah. Uh, the combination of harp and, and, the, and the viola has worked really well. So. Well, and uh, I look forward to uh, you all returning uh, and the Passionato duo uh, performing again soon uh, so that we can all enjoy that. Uh, but you're going to perform for us now and give us a little taste of that, right? Yes, yes, actually. What, um, what are you going yes. to do? We have a piece called Mambo, and it's just a, yes. a piece we've been playing almost since we started. It was yes. back when we didn't really have any music for harp and viola, and we were just looking for anything we could find that was fun. And this was originally a harp solo, and we just kind of were playing around with it and came up with a part for Jeff and a way for us to play it together. And it's one of our favorite pieces now. Mine too. I've gotten to enjoy this one several times. So that is great. Our audience will love this. Well, uh, Jill, Jeff, it has been great being with you. I, I appreciate Claire joining us as well. Uh, lovely to see you guys. And uh, thanks for your time today. And I look forward to seeing you both in person very, very soon. Yes. Thank you very much, Kim. We uh, appreciate what you're doing. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. You take care now, okay? Thank you. Uh huh. Thank mm -hmm. you.